I don't like to kill people, but if I pretend they're my mom, it's easy. Here's your look at the McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse, The Suicide Squad Polka Dot Man. Dourly dispirited Polka Dot Man wears his rainbow pastule dermis with all the shame of an acne-riddled teen going stag to the prom. But when he sprays his colorful dots, his sparkling dots can turn even the smoothest criminal into Swiss cheese. How tall is the Polka Dot Man, you may ask? Would you like to know? Oh, you're being serious. Sorry about that. I thought you were actually kidding. To show you how he stacks up with, say, after all, he is an obscure Batman villain, let's bring in Tactical Suit Batman from the Justice League Snyder Cut reviews we looked at earlier. He's roughly about the same height as Ben Affleck, though the points in Affleck's ears, not his ears, but the bat cow, makes him just a little bit taller. We can also bring in Harley Quinn. That's a nice little pairing. And Harley Quinn is just a little bit shorter than Polka Dot Man. Don't fall, don't fall. And another comparison we can also make, here he is next to Bloodsport. I guess we can move Batman over just a little bit and bring in Bloodsport. Bloodsport is so far the tallest of the figures we've looked at so far. But they're not going to be that far off from one another. They're pretty close in scale and size to one another. By far, Polka Dot Man has the most of the accessories of all the four figures that make up the Suicide Squad wave. I know, yes, to be fair, we haven't yet looked at Peacemaker, but considering the tally count of the things that come in clue with that figure, it's easy to see that he walks away, Polka Dot Man, that is, walks away with the title of most accessories. Before we get down to looking at the parts for King Shark, and I hope we make some better progress this time around, let's have a look at the trading card that comes included with Polka Dot Man. How fun is it, first of all, that we actually have such an obscure character making a mainstream movie? In any other world, in any other universe, Polka Dot Man would never have seen a light of day short of the comic pages that he appeared in. But yet, here we are looking at Polka Dot Man in the new Suicide Squad movie. Fantastic. Down below, you have Suicide Squad. Below that, underneath, I should say, Polka Dot Man, which is, of course, the name of the character. And flipping around on the back, and even though it doesn't technically give you any of the stats of the figure, which is the one thing I feel like the figure, the cards themselves lack a lot. I mean, they don't give you the stats, they don't give you the height, the weight, nor do they give the real name. They just give you the source that Suicide Squad from Films 2021. And I didn't say this when we looked at Harley Quinn, and I certainly didn't say this when we looked at Bloodsport, but really, why wouldn't they have included the names of the characters at the very least? I don't need to know how tall Polka Dot Man is. I don't, certainly don't need to know how much he weighs, but at the very least, put his name in there instead of just putting the source. Anyways, though, I can add this certainly to my other uh, trading cards we were collecting so far. I mean, here he is next to uh, Bloodsport. I just happen to have Bloodsport's card nearby. So I like to hold on to these. These will go into my sheet card protectors right after this review. The other thing, of course, that same Z's here with Polka Dot Man is he comes with the same display stand as both Harley Quinn, Bloodsport, and many really other, other DC multiverse figures we've looked at so far on this channel. Again, it would be nice if they had put D, like a, instead of DC, put like Suicide Squad or something down at the bottom here instead of just having DC across the board with every single stand. But they're not gonna, they're not gonna put in brand new printing, a stamp press to stamp on Suicide Squad and all just these stands alone. At least we get ourselves display stands. Walk away with what victories we have. We actually have stands with our figures. So we'll put that to the side, and of course. He comes included with the much-needed parts for King Shark. If you're, say, looking for a head, and you say looking for the beer belly of King Shark, then you're in luck. He comes included with both. This was one of the reasons why I couldn't go any further when it comes to the building of King Shark. We sort of were left off with just the lower stump of him, and we're sort of left with these, uh, these halved pieces. Um, judging by the way that everything installs, I can't I can't imagine that I have to have these as separate pieces anymore. I could put the two pieces together. And then, of course, then the arms will just go on either side. That's going to come include with Peacemaker. So we're going to snap these together. No turning back now. We've reached the point on the railroad track in Back to the Future 3 where there's no way we can stop the train. And then from there, we're going to go ahead and take the posts of the head. And we're going to fit that into place. I think that's it. It seems like it's... Oh, maybe not. <laughs> and they, maybe not all the way, but 
Okay, there we go. We've got the head. And then we can add the stomach. I probably should have even added the head after the fact. But this says up. So this tells me this is probably the way I'm going to put this in. And I'm assuming that would be the back. That looks like a spinal cord. So this will attach the bottom of his stomach. You know what? I'm going to take the head off for the time being. I feel like I really need to get my good grip in there to get that forced in place. There we go. I didn't have to heat that at all. Then we're going to take this part and we're going to connect it to the bottom of the base. Now, if you don't want to do all of this and you're fine just to pick up King Shark on his own, he is going to be released also from McFarlane Toys as a singular figure. Supposedly, he was supposed to be a bloodied version, and yet all the images I've seen online of him, it doesn't look like King Shark is going to be any different than this one right here. If you have picked up the singular release, by all means, let me know as I struggle to get that in. I may need to actually heat that up. And then from there, basically, we would just put the head in place. I'm sort of phoning this in for the time being. Just have to take my take my word that I will be making some better progress. But that's, bas that's basically King Shark. I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to have to work on that. So we're going to put those to the side. Boy, that was disappointing. I really thought I was going to make better progress than what I actually did. But let's move on to the rest of the accessories that come included with Polka Dot Man. Now, he comes included with the goggles. We'll start first with those. The goggles themselves are fairly soft plastic. There's always, of course, the potential risk that these could rip while you're putting it over top of the figure's head. But luckily, the head seems just the right size that you don't have to really put a lot of pressure to fit that into place. I guess for the time being, we can actually even just take the figure and I'll show you what it looks like with or without the goggles. We'll start first with the default without the goggles. A fairly good bang on likeness to actor. I think it's David Dash Malchin. Dash Malchin, I think is how you pronounce it. If it isn't, I'm sure somebody will tell me down below in the comment section. It's certainly one of the better looking head sculpts. It lacks, yes, a little bit in the way of the paint department kind of down here. I mean, his costumes kind of kept very barren and basic to just that beige color. But I really know necessarily real any complaints with the head sculpt. Looks pretty good. You even got the little reflection in the corner of his eye. I have noticed, though, I've got a few spots on his face. If you have also this figure in your collection currently, let me know if you also have various spots. I can't imagine those are... Those are supposed to be there. I may have a few little imperfections on his face for the time being. Let's see if I can maybe take those off. There's only just a few of them. Not even to the point where it's really bothering me all that much, but just enough that I'm wanting to mention it, of course, in this review. Would you consider this a bonnet? I don't know. I guess it's still a top. It's a headpiece. It's covering off his ears, of course. There's very little, again, paint happening on here. Sort of just relying on the coloring of the plastic. The polka dots, of course, are present all across his head. Red and green. Funny enough, no blue. But the blue, though, is down below. It's more closer to his arms and his tummy area. And some yellow in there as well. But we can go ahead and take the goggles. Now, there is a specific way you are putting the goggles on. Of course, you're going to want to make the opening of the nose be the place that's going to be resting against the nose. Now, you can either have the goggles up, a way of displaying the figure, or you can also bring the goggles down. Is that really how goggles work? You'd be surprised. Yes, that's the way goggles work. And they fit pretty good on his face. And while I'm fitting them on his face, I don't feel at any given point that I'm stretching the plastic where things are going to start ripping or tearing, which I guess would be the same word. I like the look of it. I would have maybe even given him an expression on his face. He sort of just has a very neutral facial expression. Harley Quinn also had, although she did have a smile. He does have technically, I guess you would consider a smile, but I would have given him a more expressioned face than what we get right here. Not bad, though. And again, I like the fact that they actually gave us goggles that remove, well, lift and lower. They didn't give us, in packaging, this. And it basically just said, well, that's the only way you can display the figure. So I appreciate the fact that they actually gave you goggles that you can remove and display any which way that, well, two ways, three ways, up, down, or off on the figure itself. His other accessory, which I guess we can talk about right now, on the sides of his forearms, he's got these little gauntlets that deploy the polka dots. Now, one side, as you'll see, is smooth. It still has the little steps to it, but as you can see, it's a little more closer to the gauntlet. This side, on the other hand, has the open slots. 
So this is the side that, that will be deploying the polka dots. If you do want them both closed though, McFarland Toys also gives you this gauntlet as well, which is basically just a replacement for this one right here. All that's involved is taking the hand, removing it with the peg, and just pop that right off the form. And then from there, this slides right off. I did notice while taking the gauntlet off the first time, and it's still there actually, there's like a little bit of almost oil or lubrication. Is that there just to make sure? And also you see as well, there's a big R, R for right. But there seems to be like a, a slick, so something they've put on the surface of it. It's probably just there to make sure that the gauntlets can be easily removed and the new one put back on. And this is the new one, by the way, the one that I'm tapping right now. Just slides over top of his forearm. There we go. And to show you the difference between the two, see how this one has the open slots? These are all lifted, and then this one has the closed slots. And then from there, you just put the, the new hand on. You know, and fine, fine, good. It's okay. It gives you at least somewhat of a consistent look with the gauntlets on both sides. I mean, I would almost even debate the question, why would they even have given you an extra gauntlet? Sticklers for detail could easily then say, well, you know, this is the one that fires off the polka dots. And if you don't have the polka dots attached to his arm, then technically his arm should look like this. Fine. Okay, we'll go with that. We'll run with that. But let's just say, I mean... It just seems like an extra bit of plastic. It was unnecessary. If anything, just have both the arms sculpted with the open, with the open gauntlet like this. Anyways, we're gonna go ahead, pop this hand back off. Wiggle, 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 and just slide that off the forearm, and we'll replace it back with the way it was originally, because then we're also gonna make use of the effect, the little polka dot effect that also comes with the figure. So you get this. And what it is, is basically the polka dots that he deploys. Now, it's looking as if it's all molded here in a translucent clear plastic. And what they've done is they've only colored some of the ones with the actual colors of the polka dots. To match, of course, the coloring of his suit. Funny enough, green makes no appearance on the polka dots. Only red, the blue, and the yellow. I guess they're sticking to primary colors. And this can fit over top of his hand. You don't have to necessarily even remove it to fit it over top of his hand. You can kind of just get it around his thumb like that and then just fit it over top of his gauntlet. The way that they've also got the gestured hand like this, get it all straightened up like this, it does give it a nice cool look when you actually have those attached to his gauntlets. I might even just have his arms straight like this when I have it on display. In fact, actually, ooh, ooh, finish the look. Let's just bring the goggles down. It looks really nice. The only thing, again, I would have said is I would have given him a little more of an expression onto his face, especially if you're going to be posing him like this. He seems so otherwise uninterested in what he's doing. I think an expression, at least on his mouth, other than just somewhat of a smile, a sort of an Orange Cassidy smile, I think they could have done a little bit more than just that. But those are the accessories that come include with Polka Dot Man. I think for the time being, we'll take this off. And it's actually just, it's slotted on the bottom. You could also just pry it open and fit it over, but there is enough wiggle space to get it around the thumb and slide it to the top of his gauntlet like that. We'll just bring this back up. And then of course, looking at the details of the rest of the figure's costume. It's a lot of this off-white gray color. It's almost very much like a grayish beige color. And of course, scattered throughout his costuming is the colors of the polka dots which we've already co colored off, covered off the colors before. The blue, the red, the yellow, and green here, which again, nowhere found on the actual effect it comes included with. But the figure has some nice sculpting to it. This may not be a case where I feel like the figure is warranting some additional wash to it. It certainly would have gone a long way to just to help improve the figure. But while looking at it though, being that his costume is so neutral in the first place, I don't feel like it screams that it needs as much attention to it like, say, Bloodsport's costume did. And when we look at the belt, for example, he's got the silver there on the front of the belt. Otherwise, a cream-colored area. And actually, there's a similar cream color. It's actually more like a beige, I suppose, color that's underneath the gauntlets as well. Nice sculpting, though, overall on the costume. I don't think I would find any real complaints to the costume. What's interesting, though, is that, again, similar to Bloodsport, the top of his of his torso is a very soft plastic, 
But what they've actually done nicely is they've mimicked the same look of the suit. So while you move the torso back, for example, you can still see the continuation of the sculpt underneath it. Nice that they did that because they could have easily just kept that the same. They could have kept it a, a very bland looking plastic. They could have not even sculpted in anything underneath it and just kept the same kind of gray color as the rest of the top of his torso. But they actually did sculpt something in there. That's nice. The fact that they did that. Now, I have one problem with the figure, and it stems more for the articulation when we look at him, but it's something I certainly want to talk about, and it's his feet. Remember when we had a look at Harley Quinn, if you remember? It wasn't that long ago. It was, what, like three, four videos, maybe five videos ago, we looked at Harley Quinn. One of my big issues I had with Harley Quinn was she had noticeable pegs on her feet. In fact, let's just move everything out of the way. Let's bring in Harley Quinn so you can actually see what I was talking about. Remember, remember how she had those really, really ugly looking pegs at the bottoms where her ankles would be? They put that there, obviously, so you'd be able to adjust her feet. The problem with that, though, is it looked unruly. It looked, it looked unsightly. What they've done here on the opposite end of it, and they've, I feel have gone too much the extreme the other way, is that they've finished off the boot, but they haven't given enough clearance at all. So as you see, maybe by the redness in my thumb, that I, I, I am applying pressure to the feet. They don't seem to sit flush, which causes some serious issues when it comes to Polka Dot Man actually being able to stand upward. They should have really left enough of a space gap in here or made this piece a larger piece that would have gone over top of the peg that there would have still been wiggling, a wiggle space available. Because like right, right now, I have real difficulty getting Polka Dot Man to stand. And I don't think there's a way to actually go in there and fix it either. Anyways, let's have a look at the articulation now on Polka Dot Man. When it comes to his head, while he still has a ball peg like the other two figures we've looked at so far, because he does have a higher collar, it gets pretty close for comfort up to his chin strap, and it causes a little more resistance when it comes to rotating the head back and forth. Not sure if you can actually hear it or not but it actually feels like there's a little bit of resistance there, like there's plastic rubbing up against plastic. I don't think it's to the point where I feel like the paint's going to start wearing off on the bottom chin strap of his bonnet, but it's definitely noticeable when you rotate his head back and forth. It's just one of those unavoidable cases just by the way his costume is designed. Let's just fix his goggles here. The head moves up only by that much, and the head moves down only by that much, and also can rock back and forth. One thing that's rather interesting, though, about Polka Dot Man is while the other two figures we've looked at so far, Harley Quinn and Bloodsport, have both have cup socket joints in his shoulders, uh, Polka Dot Man doesn't actually have it. When you look at his arms, first of all, his arms can go beyond the point of a 90-degree angle bend. But when you look at the side of his torso, for example, what you're essentially getting is you're getting an overlay, softer, rubbery torso piece that's fit over top of his existing torso. You can kind of see his body underneath all that. It could be a case that they want to reuse maybe the body that's underneath for another figure and they've just overlaid a, a, a sculpted piece specifically unique to Polka Dot Man. But nowhere to be found is there a socket joint. It's not there. He only has just a regular hinge joint in his shoulders. It could be one of the earliest and only cases I've seen so far of a DC multiverse. There's probably other ones out there, but there's very few of them that actually don't have the socket joint. And Polka Dot Man seems to be one of them. Um, the arms do hinge out. And again, you rotate those all the way around. He does have a swivel in his bicep that rotates all the way around. He does have a double hinge joint in his elbow. So you can have him relaxing if you want. And the hands rotate also all the way around. I didn't mention it already, but like this one hand looks like it should be holding something. It almost looks like he's got, he's ready to scratch somebody like a cat. I don't know why I didn't mention it earlier in this review, but it's just really strange. It's a very strange looking hand that he has to have like that. This other hand's fine. It looks like a gestured hand, but this looks like a cat scratching hand. Why is that the case? Anyways, upper torso is on a ball joint. You can rotate that all the way around. And again, very nice seamless look, even though, yes, you can see the dividing line of where this torso piece is over top, but at least they continue the trend of sculpting the body underneath it. So first of all, it doesn't look like just bearing unsculpted plastic. Second of all, they didn't use a different color or the generic coloring of the plastic that would have looked unruly. At least it looks somewhat consistent from here to here. As for the legs, the legs split out. He still has the lower rubbery, I know people call it figure diapers. That's awfully a cruel thing to say, but you know, it's true. I mean, he does have like a lower, softer 
softer rubbery plastic diaper. That's basically the easiest way to describe it. It does hide the joints, but it does cause, when you do, do this a lot of times, it does fray the edges of the rubber and it makes it look a little even more obvious the fact that he's wearing like something that's overlaying his lower body. The legs go forward though, the legs go back, swivels sort of at the top where it attaches, double hinge on the knee. And then when we get to his footwear, again, it seems to be the case that his feet are sculpted to the lower part of his leg because it doesn't seem like they rotate. And then we can talk about, again, the problem I have with the feet. Not nearly enough clearance, if you ask me. Look at what little of a slot they have available for this guy. I mean, you can move his feet back and forth this way, and you can rotate them technically all the way around. But when it comes to moving them up and down, forget about it. Forget about it. He does have, yes, toe articulation. That's fine. I don't mind the fact that they have toe articulation, but they definitely should have allotted a lot more space, left the gap bigger in there so it would have been able to... Because when it comes to, again, moving his feet forward like this, I can't get his feet flat. This one foot is kind of just angled down. This one's not bad on this side, but it causes a figure that's quite unstable when it comes to him standing. So much so, I was even surprised to see that he stood on his own at the beginning of this review. So much so, when it comes to wrapping things up on this review, I'm going to make use of a display stand because I just don't want this figure falling over. And even then, as you can see, let's get him properly attached to the display stand. Even then, as you can see, he still has some difficulty, some problems standing upright. A good looking figure lacks a little bit in, in the face department. I think the likeness is pretty close, but he really needed to have a more exaggerated expression for a character like Polka Dot Man. And I really don't get again why they had to include the extra gauntlet piece. It's nice that you can at least have the functioning gauntlet that's actually deploying the polka dots, or you can pop that off and swap it out so it looks like the one that's right next to it. I don't get it though. It just seems like unnecessary plastic. Is it a point really that collectors would have noticed if they had left it off in the first place? You want to talk irony? Notice I complained about Harley Quinn having very noticeable hinge pegs on her ankles, that they probably should have found an easier way to make it look a little more seamless to the top of her boots. Well, ironically enough, both the Bloodsport and now Polka Dot Man that we've looked at that have had more finished looking footwear have both had problems standing. I should have kept my mouth shut when I was talking about Harley Quinn's feet. Yeah, unfortunately, the case with both Bloodsport and Polka Dot Man so far both the figures have had some dismal times standing upright, and I've had to use display stands in both the cases, possibly with Polka Dot Man being the worst of the batch so far. Now, if you're doing your tally, Harley Quinn is one of a figure that actually could stand, versus Polka Dot Man and Bloodsport having difficulty standing. Peacemaker could either stalemate things, being two and two, or it could be another case where there's a figure that's having difficult time standing. I really think that they should have put a larger gap, a more visible gap for Polka Dot Man. I know what you're thinking. Well, that's what they did with that's what they did with Harley Quinn, and you found fault with Harley Quinn. No, there has to be a happy medium, something in the middle of things. It doesn't have to be the extreme on either side. They should have, if anything, brought the boot up a little higher on Polka Dot Man, so there was enough of a space that that hinge joint would have allowed the feet to be leveled and flat. Unfortunately, the one foot on my polka dot man, I think it's the one that's attached to the display stand right now, is the problematic foot. I just can't get it leveled and flat. It results in a figure that has some real difficult time a lot of the time, and it ends up being a figure that falls over way too frequently. So when it comes to displaying poor polka dot man, I'm going to have to put him on a display stand. If you've had this figure in your collection, let me know if you've had similar issues, but they really should have allotted more clearance, I think, when it comes to his footwear. As for his accessories, he does come included with the polka dots that he can deploy. And again, I I don't know. I'm scratching my head why they wasted the time to make the plastic with the additional gauntlet. Yeah, sure, it's nice that you have the two ways of displaying the gauntlets. The one, the gauntlet that's kind of opened up to fire off the polka dots and the one that's closed. But they could have used that plastic and put it towards giving us the alternate head sculpt for Bloodsport instead of a figure I know we're eventually going to be getting. Polka Dot Man is a personal favorite of mine of this wave we've looked at so far. And in fact, actually, in fact, all the figures have been great looking figures. Some of them are a little more hits than misses. I think the miss so far might just be Bloodsport, just because of the fact his plastic, there's so much, so, so much barren, plain plastic that a lot of additional paint really could have been afforded. Polka Dot Man doesn't have as much paint either. 
but at least he has the actual colorful polka dots. And his outfit is, to be honest, kind of bland and plain to, in the first place. So I don't think that's a big a problem anyways. Really excited to have a look at Peacemaker. Certainly really excited also to put together King Shark, which I'm going to have to do a little bit of quality time putting that figure together on the side. I thought I was going to have a, an easy time once the head went into place. No, no, it's it's the tummy. That tummy isn't going to fit properly in place. May even have to heat it up a little bit. A hairdryer. It's apparently what a hairdryer sounds like. Have you picked up Polka Dot Man? If you have, let me know down below in the comments section. And for your video question for today, even though we don't do a lot of video questions, but we should start doing more of that. Some participation with the audience is always good. For your video question for today, what is an obscure villain that you really like? For me, 8-Ball. We need to totally get an 8-Ball figure. Polka Dot Man's pretty high on that list as well. And uh, But what's your favorite obscure villain? Like We're not talking like the A-list, the B-list. We're talking like C, D. The lower, the better. What's your favorite obscure villain? That's your video question for today. Make sure as well, if you're new to this channel, that you're hitting that subscribe button down below, that you're as well turning on the bell notification, and that you're as well keeping your peepers peeled. We are three figures down of what potentially will be a five video series. Because of course, we still are going to be looking at the Peacemaker, if we can actually see it. That's a joke there. And of course, we're going to be looking at King Shark when he's eventually put together. I'm going to have to spend some time on that. Lots of stuff coming your way, guys. So as always, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.